Well, go on, Pifting. Today, I'm going to be talking about the gunpowder plot. At the start of 17th century, James I came to the throne. And if you were unfortunate enough to be a Catholic under James's rule, then the authorities wouldn't have been very kind the People who refused to go to Protestant church were called recusants. They were issued huge fines and jail sentences just for being a Catholic. This continued until one day a rich Catholic man named Robert Catesby decided he was sick of being told what so, to do. On the 20th of May, 1604, Thomas Catesby gathered together a group of men to set in motion what would eventually be the gunpowder plot. The group of men that met that night were as follows. A man called Thomas Percy, annoyed by the king's unfulfilled promises and misleading ways. Robert Catesby's cousin, Tom Winter. A man called Jack Wright, Thomas Catesby's oldest friend. And finally, the most infamous character of the bunch, who went by Guido Fawkes, recruited for his expertise in mining and explosives. Fawkes is known to have over a decade of military experience fighting in Belgium for the Catholic side. He was relatively unknown in London and within the group. It is thought that it was initially Guy Fawkes' idea to take out Parliament with powder. One of the men in the group, Thomas Percy, was a poor relation of the Earl of Northumberland. This meant that the gang could rent any room in Parliament. They decided to lease a cellar right in the heart of the Houses of Parliament. With their newfound access to Parliament, the gang acquired 36 barrels of gunpowder. That equates to 250 cannons firing at once. Now the gunpowder was sorted, Robert Catesby saw and seized his opportunity to plan the rest of the plot. He decided that in the chaos of the explosion, he would run in and seize James's eldest daughter, Princess Elizabeth. He thought that the kidnapping would ensure a Catholic rule of England. With the gunpowder stored in the cellar, the plan seemed unstoppable. With the plan swiftly in motion, Catesby's arrogance let him try and recruit another member. This member was called Francis Tresham. He was rich and had friends in Parliament. This was his downfall. They wanted him because he had very expensive stables. Horses were like the getaway cars of the time. Despite this extra member, the plan still seemed sure not to fail. That remained so until a man called Lord Monteagle received a letter from a hooded figure at the night. The letter warned Monteagle not to attend Parliament the following day because of a mysterious and unnamed blow that was afoot. Presumably still in the dark about the meaning of the letter, Lord Monteagle rode like the wind to deliver the letter to the King's Secretary of State, Robert Cecil. As to whom wrote the letter, we can only theorise. Despite hearing that a plan had potentially fallen through, Robert Catesby continued with the plot. Meanwhile, of course, Guy Fawkes is hiding in the cellar with the 36 barrels of gunpowder covered in firewood and a fuse to last 18 hours. Upon being presented with the Monteagle letter, King James I is reported to have realised the meaning of it straight away. Acting upon the King's orders, Cecil and Monteagle find Guido Fawkes hiding in the cellar with the gunpowder. Guido Fawkes claims to be a servant, going under the name John Johnson. The gunpowder is discovered and Guy Fawkes is personally interrogated by the King himself. Subsequent to his confession, Guido Fawkes is tortured to release the names of his fellow gang the members. The rest of the gang have fled to a house in the Midlands called Holbeach House. Amateurish and exhausted in Catesby's absence, the gang attempt to dry out some gunpowder in front of an open As fire. As you can imagine, this ludicrous move resulted in one man being blinded and the rest merely injured. With Catesby now at the house, the army surrounded them. Robert Catesby and Thomas Percy decide to sacrifice themselves, taking themselves outside to get shot. Reportedly, Robert Catesby died clutching a statue of the Virgin Mary. The rest were captured, briefly imprisoned and then hung before being decapitated and having their heads put on spikes at London Tower. Ultimately, the country remained Protestant. And thus ended the gunpowder plot. Goodbye and stay dead, G.